Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, I'm going to walk you through machining this part to completion using a Mazak Quick Turn 200M machine. Now, on the Mazak Quick Turn, you have access to turning tools and live milling tools, but only with the C axis. Let's have a look. I'm going to go load the machine that we're going to use. You can see I have my common tools already predefined on this. This is just a win time in my machining template. If I go to the Equipment tab here and I go to Test Machining Axis, you can see what axes this machine supports. So I have my X-axis here. I have my Z-axis, of course. I have Z2. This is for the steady in this case. I have my C2, and I have my C1. Okay? And, of course, you can rotate the turret as well. This is the machine that we're going to use to program this part on. Let's see how we get there. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define what's called a machine part setup document. What's cool about machine part setup documents is this is an intermediate document between both the design side of Top Solid and the machining side of Top Solid. It's in this document that we can tell Top Solid what the stock condition is. We can also tell it what the fixtures are and whatnot. There's lots of cool things you can do here. You can use custom stock, you can use basic block or cylinder stock. Really, it's up to you. Now here what I want to do is maybe I'm going to machine this starting in this orientation, sure, like this. Okay, So I'm going to say that I want to start, and I know I'm going to leave 30 thousandths there. If I look, this is the current stock length. Now maybe I have a pair of, uh, or a piece of scrap stock laying around that's exactly, for example, uh, 3 quarters. Why not? Let's do that. If I type 3 quarters here, you can see the software evenly distributes the material. I'm going to lock 3 quarters and say, well, for my first pass, Let's make it a sixteenth. Why not? I want to take a sixteenth off the front face, leave everything else off on the back so we have something to hold on to. Next on the diameter, this is the diameter to zero of this part. Maybe I want to make this out of a piece of four and an eighth inch stock. So that's ninety-four thousandths per side, as you can see. Again, it's just showing you the options you have in defining stock. We'll go ahead and save that. Last step, I'm going to go ahead and choose machining, and I'm going to pick my Mazak Quick Turn 200M machine. Okay, now that the machine is loaded, we're just going to go ahead and load our part onto the machine. Now, before I do this, just to show you that you can, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the machine. I can turn it back on. I can go into here as well, go to display and say, for example, you know what, I don't want to see the ground elements. Maybe I don't want to see the sub spindle or the second z-axis, because maybe all I care about is this right now. This just simplifies what we're looking at, which is kind of cool. From here I'm going to drag and drop my machine part setup into the cam file and I'm going to simply position it. I'm going to take that cylinder to this cylinder. Perfect. I'm going to take that face to this face. And then finally what I want to do is I want to align this axis here with my XZ plane just because then I'm putting this part in a specific way so if I have to put the part back on the machine I have a way to locate it. I'm going to finish positioning. Next, I'm going to tell the top solid that the main chuck is the chuck that's holding the part, and I'm done. I'm ready to start machining inside of top solid. So maybe the first thing that we want to do is drill out the center of this. So let's go ahead and select that hole. I'm going to right-click, go to Drilling, and choose Hole Machining. Here the software pops up. It shows the, the machining in detail. It needs us to pick a tool, so let's go pick a tool. As you can see, I have a couple tools predefined already in here. These are tools that are always standard on my machine, for example. So here I'm going to grab this 3 quarter inch end mill. Cool. From there, I just need to choose a couple of things. First of all, is it the tool that's spinning? Is this a live tool? If so, I leave the rotating element as a tool. Is it the part that's spinning? In which case, I'm going to switch to part mode. Or is it the part and the tool that's spinning? So again, you have the freedom to choose what you want real simply here. Next, I also want this to go all the way through the stock. So if you can see, it just extended the toolpath automatically to drill all the way through my stock. Finally, we can go look up some speeds and feeds. So you can see we're running at 537 surface feet. Maybe you want to change that. That's up to you. You can set this as you want. You can set this to be driven in constant surface foot mode or in standard feed mode. That's up to you as well. If I go into settings, of course here, I could choose if I wanted to run a specific cycle, like maybe I wanted to use a pecking cycle. The choice is yours. For me, I'm just going to go ahead and validate, and we'll go into the first level of machine simulation. And here you're just going to see that tool pop down, do its drilling, and pop out. Great. 
I rotate this, you can see that the stock model has been updated as well. Next, maybe I want to rough turn down the face of the model, so I'm going to right click on that face under the turning section here. I'll choose roughing. If I look straight at this, you can see that my tool is going to rough down that face automatically to the current stock condition, which is fantastic. Maybe all I want to do is set the depth of cut to be a little less, maybe 30 thousandths. Maybe I'm going to leave 10 thousandths for finish. And you can see the tool path is continuously updating and auto extending through the stock. Maybe you want to turn across it this way. Just drag the arrow how you want, and the software will update. Kind of cool. Like this, now we have that simulation complete. Next, maybe what I want to do is go through here and select this face to rough. Why not? Or let's take this tool path and just drag and drop it onto that face. Cool. So I just used control, drag and drop. Now, this is turning down this way, plus I would say that's violating our chuck. That's bad. First, we want to turn down the length. Next, I want to limit the tool path. Well, let's see how easy that is to do. So here, I'm going to go to my limits and I'm going to go down to chuck jaw and switch it to Z. Now here I could type a value. My zero is in the front here, so it would be a negative value. I could say minus 0.5. And you can see that's perfect. I could also choose a point. Maybe I want to go to this point right here on the model. Good enough. This way it'll follow the model if anything changes in the model. Great. And now that's done, and I've roughed that out. Now let's rough turn the inside of the part. So I'm going to choose this face here, and I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and select this face. Go to roughing again. This time, however, I want to change tools. So I'm going to go back to my tool selection, and I'm going to change to tool 3, which happens to be an ID tool. And you can see the preview of it if I hover there. Perfect. Maybe again, all I want to do is change how I'm turning. Maybe I don't want to turn this way. Maybe I want to turn this way. And maybe my depth of cut's a bit heavy, so let's change it to 0.1. Anyways, you get the idea. It's really, really easy to program parts like this inside of Top Solid 7. Now, let's slow down a little bit and let's have a quick look at what we've done so far. I'm going to select everything and simulate it, but in this case, I'm going to ask the software to turn on the machine simulation. So this way, we can see what's going on with everything. So here you can see the tool is indexing. It's coming down and it's drilling and it's going back and we're indexing again to the next tool which is our OD tool. We're going to rough turn down the face and you can see with the machine simulation you can always rotate pan and zoom to get a better look at what's going on and now we're going to go ahead and go to our ID tool and you'll see that it's doing its job as well. Very nice. Last thing we need to do is the finish turning, right? So while we have that ID tool in use why don't we go ahead and grab this face to this face. We'll go here to finishing. Now if you look, there's an arrow. This is the cut direction. This is where the tool left off, so sending it in here to do its thing maybe doesn't make sense. So let's double click on the arrow and invert it, and now we can just turn that way and be done. And now the ID has been finished. Let's also now go and do the OD. So I'm going to select this to here go to finishing. We're going to switch tools, of course. We want to go to our OD tool, tool one. Perfect. And we're done. At this point, all of the turning operations are complete. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do some of the milling operations. And then we'll do part transfer, and then we'll machine the other side of the part.